With the 0.16 release candidate upon us, the merges this week are more focused on solidifying the release candidate than introducing new big features, which is great as we approach 0.16's stable release and the eventual 0.16 game jam. Right now, Bevy 0.16 RC2 is out, which you can find on docs.rs by going to the top dropdown and clicking on RC2. If you desire, you can go check out the changes between RC1 and RC2 or the full 0.15.3 to 0.16 chain set over on GitHub. Speaking of the release candidate, the Better Release Notes working group and the 0.16 release gang working groups are improving the release process with a new release tagging content workflow, as well as a helpful guide to migration guides. This kind of work is really responsible for the great reputation that Bevy's release notes and migration guides have, so it's really great to see this continuing investment. Error handling also gains more improvements in 18.454, which is making 0.16 a very interesting release for error handling in an entire Bevy application. From systems themselves to observers and system params, it's all coming together. This one will be really nice for those of you that make a lot of little demos like me. The default app window title uh, has now been replaced with the current exe or current executables title. There's a little screenshot showing what this looks like on Windows specifically, but this is a nice little quality of life improvement. And for required components, the require syntax was reworked in 18555 to better align with what people expect when using Rust. You can see the updated example in the PR and there is a migration guide. This is a breaking change in some cases, but it does make the whole system easier to learn and better aligns with how people expect to be writing Rust. So this is a great change overall. And Tracy is a real-time nanosecond resolution remote telemetry hybrid frame and sampling profiler, which is a whole bucket full of words. Basically, if you're having performance issues, Tracy can help you find them. And 18490 builds on top of the existing render diagnostics recording to also upload your GPU timestamps to Tracy. You can see a demo of what that looks like here in case, like I assume most of you, you've never run Tracy before. And if you're looking forward to playing with the new Weasel on Wasm specifically, some fixes landed in 18591, which should make it into the next release candidate. It does seem like we'll get a release candidate number three sometime this week, so definitely look forward to that. And as always, Alice's Merge Chain is a maintainer level view into active PRs and how the bevy sausage is made. She always does a great job on this, so definitely something worth checking out, especially if you are at all an open source maintainer or otherwise are interested in how bevy as a project gets so many PRs merged. And first up for the showcases, we've got Bevy ECS and Leptos. This is the initial release of the documentation site for Scheme, but the showcase this time is actually the static site generation using Bevy ECS for the data model and Leptos with islands mode as the render engine. The generator responsible for piecing these pieces together is Synog. Being the person who actually built this site, I'm very happy with these technologies and how they work together. And it's really interesting to see how Bevy ECS can be used as a data model for something that isn't even close to a game. And next up from websites to color themes, which are very web related, Bevy UI inspired color themes in this case, including a classic dark mode live switching inside of a game. And our next demo is a Game Boy Advance demo, which is going to be pretty bright. This is Bevy's breakout example actually ported to the Game Boy Advance using the now published Bevy Mod GBA. I've been having a ton of fun personally building Game Boy Advance games with Bevy, and it's incredible that we can even do this at all. This particular example is running in an emulator, but I have run Game Boy Advance games with Bevy on an actual Game Boy Advance as well. And next up, we've got Unhaunter. Unhaunter is an open source game about paranormal investigation and ghosts. It runs on Windows, Linux, and in the browser, and also happens to be open source, so releases are posted on GitHub. The concept here feels fairly unique, and and is definitely worth giving a shot. And a super interesting note for the developer of Exit 3A, Exit 3A developer Mike Ramirez was interviewed about the game on their local PBS station. If you're interested, the runtime of the segment is about eight minutes and we do have the link to it on the website. And we just saw this game when we looked at the color themes earlier in this issue, but this is a bevy of birds in the same game. That is a bevy of birds in bevy. <laughs> And this is Orbital Tactics. Orbital Tactics is a space shooter with orbital mechanics where you defend Earth in a gunship. The torpedoes in this demo use a model predictive controller that picks the thrust direction that minimizes time to target under limited propellant. This one is one you can go play on itch.io. And while it's nice to see things on itch, it's also nice to see things go to Steam. This is Simulo. Simulo is a multiplayer physics sandbox with Lua scripting that currently supports Box2D with Rapier support coming soon. 
The author says that adding Rapier support was not a huge lift due to the way they implemented Box2D in the first place. This one is available to wishlist on Steam. And node graph scripting is something that other ecosystems tend to have, for example, Blender or other game engines. The goal of this demo is to take advantage of Bevy's reflection infrastructure for functions and values and use that to create node graphs that will run as systems. This would support modding and scripting use cases inside of the Bevy ecosystem. And that brings us to the crate releases, starting off with Bevy Mod Scripting 0.11. Bevy Mod Scripting is an initial attempt to enable scripting within Bevy's existing framework and to complement dynamic systems introduced in the last release, which we covered in the last issue, scripts can now register their own fully legit Bevy components. And Bevy Spacetime DB got its first release. Bevy Spacetime is an integration between Bevy and Spacetime DB, which recently hit 1.0. Now, I'm not super familiar with Spacetime DB, but it does seem like a hosted database for multiplayer game applications. And finally this week, we've got Bevy Lint Laundry Day. Bevy Lint Laundry Day is a thread in a similar style to Alice's Merge Train, focused on Bevy's linter, Bevy Lint. Bevy Lint currently is available as 0.2, and you can see here in the thread, review the Bevy 0.16 compatibility PR is on the list. And that's it for this week. As always, we have the full list of PRs that were merged, as well as issues and PRs that were opened. If you're looking for things that might happen after 0.16, you might want to look at the open PRs. If you're looking at things that are making it into the 0.16 release, those will end up in the merged PRs this week. And of course, if you're interested in the 0.16 release candidate and testing it, make sure you file issues and check out the other issues if you're running into anything with your application. The 0.16 milestone does have everything left to do before the release candidate becomes the stable release. And that's it for me this week. I will see you in the next one. Have a great rest of your week.